the day. Yes, good. <laughs> so welcome back for another video. Um, we're on something a bit different today, so uh, <clears throat> I'm covering on this job. I used to do this job quite a lot. Yeah, I'm just covering for a couple of days on it. Uh, and it's a perfect opportunity for me to show you something that's pretty unique. Um, you, generally, there's not many of you that maybe watch this that will have seen these. Um, they are a, a sort of a, a, a specific organic uh, machine, even though conventional farmers are starting to use use them. Um, yes, yeah, so it is a Garford Robocrop in row, nine row weeder. So here we are, here it is. This is the machine itself. So, what's it for? What's it for? What does it do? Why does it do it and how does it do it? Well, let's have a bit of a look. <laughs> So these are our organic broccoli plants. Uh, this variety is probably steel, I'm guessing. So here they are, this is a lovely, lovely broccoli plant. And we want to keep these weed free, which, which obviously every farmer wants to do. And at the minute they are pretty clean. You can see there, look, there's the odd, uh, the odd little weed starting to poke through. So hoeing between the rows is is easy you know well it's, it's not <laughs> it's not easy you've got to have a steady hand and all that sort of but holding between the rows is all right but getting in between the plants in this bit now there's a challenge now there's a challenge for you so historically people used to use hoes used to hand hoe it so they'd walk along the field hoeing in between the plants but in the modern age of technology um, doing things a little bit differently so we need to get in between here so how do we do it we use one of these <laughs> so we've had this on the farm for quite a long time we've got five different bits of Garford machinery this is the nine row this is the biggest we've got a five row two cereal hose and a brush weeder so on the machine there's these rotors I'll tell you what we'll do Right, so on the machine there's these rotors. Here they are. This is what does all the weeding. You can see it's on a cranked leg. And what happens is this will rotate. As it rotates, it comes in between the plant like so. Goes up to the plant, goes around the plant, carries on around the plant, and so forth and so on like that. So that's how does it work then? Well, cameras. So we've got a camera here camera there and a camera on the front so there's so there's three cameras on the machine and what they do there's a computer in the cab and basically what they do is they search and pick out the crop by identifying it through its color so it'll look down it'll see these broccoli plants it'll target that plant in the center because of how green it is and the size it'll do the same for that one and the same for that one and anything in between it'll just treat as a weed It'll treat as a, as a pest. <clears throat> That's basically how, how it visually works, but then there's an awful lot of sensors and systems and sort of gadgetry and robotics on the machine to enable it to actually get through the plant each time because that, getting the timing right of that is absolutely critical and it's got to be spot on. So if you could imagine, if it it's got to recognise each individual plant, it's got to do so many per second across all nine rows and then work out the correct time to let the rotor go through the middle because if it gets that wrong, boof, bye bye, broccoli. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's a very, very fine tuned technical machine. Um, I've got other cameras on it, these are ones that um, were fitted, well that the farm fitted. Um, so it enables you to see down and watch what the rotors are doing and then behind it you've just got some hose behind which running in the middle of the row so it steers itself as well um, so the, the cameras will pick the center of the rows and it'll steer itself down the row so you can wiggle your tractor around like that 
and it'll stay with the row it'll move itself from side to side so these side shift on hydraulic rams underneath there and also these wheels at the side will turn as well so it'll it'll basically the tractor can be doing that but the implement will stay dead central to the uh, to the rows right let's have a look outside sorry i got a mouthful of nuts <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look outside and uh, before we get to the boring talky bit have a look outside you can actually see what it does and then you'll have a better under better idea and understanding of how it works when i'm explaining it to you so let's zoom outside and have a look Right then, let's get this, uh, let's get this beast ready for some work. Take the support pins out to stop the arms from uh, coming down on themselves way on the road. Right, let's just fold her out then. So on the oh, on the number two spool. Out she goes. Unfolded so. Well, it goes back on. And now we need to get two 19 mil spanners. Slacken that off. Here's the cameras. Put the cameras upright. Absolutely critical, and I mean critical, that these cameras are in precisely the same spot every time. Absolutely critical. <clears throat> if these cameras are out just slightly, 
and it will cause you know, mega, mega, mega problems. Oh, just make sure it's right up against the stop. <clears throat> right, so that's how it's two up. So that's stage two. So now we'll move on to stage three. Actually, so there's some stops on it that I need to get out, but I need the machine running and extended to uh, to get them out. So, stage three, let's turn the computer on. Flick. It'll do its thing. A picture of a penguin will come up in a second. And we know we're good. Verifying DMI pool data. Loading ho. Penguin! <laughs> Sorted. Right, ensure all personnel are clear of the machine while it synchronizes the encoders. So to do that, put the PTO on. So oh, the PTO now is turning in the hydraulic pump or the gearbox the hydraulic pump and uh, so it's got some oil now so begin synchronizing the encoders I don't think you'll be able to see that in the mirror but the encoders are now spinning the encoders sorry the rotors are now spinning there we go so it's synchronized the rotors Right, so the screen's on, running, machine's free, cameras are up. So before I start, I just want to do a rotor test. So I go to setup, just check me uh, crotch spacing, medium, yep, yeah, configuration, polybell 33, plant spacing, I've narrowed the plant spacing up a bit, 30.5, clearance normal, crop colour green, advanced, so that's got all your advancedness on it. <laughs> So I'll go down, 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 down to test rotors. So select, select rotor test. You can pick from one to nine. Well, no, don't want to do that. I want to do all of them. So begin test. Now, oh, sorry, you can see on the screen there a little green line appearing. That's the actual rotor. That's what it's doing. And that white line there is. Um, is is sort of the target as a tolerance and uh, really you want the line the green line as sort of straight as you can if it's really really up and down and wiggly it means you you're, um, you've got a bit of an index sensor fault or an encoder fault so that one's bang on so while it's running that we'll go out and i'll just show you it's spinning Right, so the rotors have test okay, so done. So back to the main screen. So that's me left hand set, that's my middle camera, and that's my right hand camera. So I'll go through the controls that I'll use while I'm going up and down the field on this screen. At some point, well, let's say at some point I will. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it onto the middle one. To begin with, you can see the broccoli there. Front, so I put me on my head. I bob me on my head, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll get going. Right, so the PTO is engaged. Uh, we're in a thousand speed on the on the box. <coughs> I know. Yeah, service. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to run it about 620, 640 uh, speed on the PTO. So I'll just rev the tractor up. If I need a bit more oil at some point, the uh, 
screen will tell me and I can just give you a few more revs so there we are about 640 there so there's plenty of oil so I'll change down my ranges on me uh, let me push some well me, me hair and tortoise buttons here all right so in the bottom range now with this machine you don't you need to get a bit of a bit of a run up on it so I'm going to drop the the front section down and I'm going to use this joystick so I want to drop it down before the crop so it has a chance to see the crop and sort of work its way into it so I'll just put the camera on so I've got three cameras on the machine just visual cameras and I've got that one set for the front and I can see the two wings on the screen but I set the uh, mirrors angle the mirrors down and I can see exactly what the uh, what the wings are doing so we're going to start walking into the crop now nice and steady just watching I'm watching that screen to make sure it's going round the crop watching that screen to make sure it's picking the plants up which it is and before we get to the crop again with the back press the lower button on my linkage that's slowly dropping down now hopefully that will pick up the crop as well the start is always a little bit dodgy yeah it is so now we'll increase the speed increase the speed right so we are we are going so I'm being quiet because I'm just making sure the offset of the rotors is, is correct at the minute. Which it looks to be, because there's a fine offset that you can adjust on the screen. And we'll go through that in a second. I'll just get myself set up with the with GPS. I'll just have to... Oh dear, I'll just have to steer manually for a little time. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, so get ourselves out with GPS and we'll have a bit of a bit of a closer look at toad screen. Alright, so um, we can adjust something on the screen called fine offset. And what I'll do, I'll overlay um, a little video now of the of the rotors. So you can see how the rotors go in between the plants. Well, you can sort of adjust the point from where they go. In between the plants whether you want them to come in early come in late come in the middle or go further through the plant or go like less further between the gap <clears throat> so you can see now they're coming in they go through the gap and then back out again so that's what you're adjusting with your fine offset so on the screen here you've got this offset square if, it, if that as you can maybe see is a green dot if that green dot was absolutely dead in the center that mean everything will be running central and you can see on this screen it's not that one's right away to the left because the machine was coming too far through the crop and as it was coming back out it wasn't getting the clearance and it was it was taking the crop out so that's shifted all the way to the side so use this this button here you can change the direction with that little arrow so that's pointing right now it's pointing down now it's pointing left now it's pointing up and if you want to move move the the dot you just press the arrow you know you move it to whichever way you want to move the rotors and then you press that and I think each click is a centimeter I think yeah I think each clicks a centimeter so that's your fine offset so all the time you can't really see in that wing mirror but all the time I'm going up and down the field I am I am adjusting that a lot because it's 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 well it's, it's just one of the only things on the machine really is you're going up down the field that I can actually adjust the rest of it you've just got your faith in um, in the technology so that's the middle one I'll just bring it back in a bit so I'll do that press that and that's just going to make them come through the crop a little bit more so you, you don't you need to you can't really play it safe because if you play it safe and you don't send them too far through the crop you may as well just use a, a normal side oh 
Um, so you've got to be brave and get them to go as far in between the crop as you dare as you can for it to actually work because the whole point of this machine is to weed in between the in, the, in between the gaps of the plants uh, but you don't want to be too brave because the trouble with this broccoli is if you knock it you disturb the roots uh, now a few hours later on you look across and you can just see them all starting to wilt they, they don't they don't die straight away and broccoli plants aren't very hardy they're not very um, strong, if you know what I mean. They don't take a lot of knocking about to to kill them. So yeah, it's a it's a frightening old job. <laughs> so let's go out and actually have a look and see what effect it's having. So here we are. So here's the bed. Here's the broccoli plants. It's actually a bit of a big space in there for some reason, but. Um, so you can see there, look, that's a thistle, that's a goner. It's also a thistle, a creeping thistle, I think. And there's another. So the, these were in between the rows, like that. These were down here. So with a, with a standard sort of side hoe, you'd come along and you'd, you'd, you'd get there, and you'd get there, and there'd be this band in between all the plants, this band here, which wouldn't get hoed unless you did it by hand so when the rotors come round it comes around the plant like that stays there goes along till it gets the next plant and goes around it and it enables you to get these out you can see so they're a goner now so yeah so that's what we're doing that's what we're trying to achieve and it works uh, it works very well it does <laughs> Right, so I hope you enjoyed that little uh, brief look. Uh, it might not be brief, <laughs> but I look at our uh, garden in Roho. It, uh, it might be a slow job, it might be a slow job, but it, it, it's not <laughs> when you're doing it. You're doing it, you're on the edge of your seat all day, checking, constantly looking in those mirrors, looking at that camera. You never stop, you head like this. <laughs> like that all day so um, yeah I hope you sort of enjoyed that little look uh, I'm guessing a lot of you have not seen something like this before uh, and it's great that I've had the uh, opportunity to, to actually film it um, I was wondering if I'd ever get the chance to film it or if I'd have to come down and film it when Angel was, was hoeing um, like after work or something like that but no, no, I managed it so uh, I'll carry on now Keep staring at these mirrors and staring at this screen, praying that um, I'm not going to kill all this broccoli. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll catch you in the next one. And uh, yeah, if you like the videos, don't forget to. Well, I'll say what all the YouTubers say. Don't forget to subscribe hit the bell button <laughs> and uh, have a like like my facebook page oh, i've got an instagram uh, account now uh, if you just search for johnny1388 on instagram you have me on there um, I, I do it I, I don't do a lot on it but I, I put stuff on it every now and again um, just with making the videos facebook and instagram uh, you know, sometimes you forget to do one or do the other and not the others and so forth and so on. So yeah, if you want to add me on Instagram, I'm on there. Johnny1388 Instagram, or however it is. <laughs> so yeah, I'll get back to this. So uh, have a nice time doing whatever you're doing. And I'll see you in the future. At some point.